You may have heard about topic clusters as a way to help build topical authority for SEO, but what are topic clusters? What is topical authority? And how can all this help your SEO efforts? Let's find out. So first of all, what are topic clusters and why do they matter? Topic clusters are basically a way of creating content for your website in a structured and strategic way. And we'll look at how to set these up in a moment, but first of all, why does this even matter? And why do we do this? Well, we do this for two main reasons. The first and a fairly obvious one is from a user perspective. They give your audience the information they're looking for and they save users having to ping from site to site to find the info they need and get their questions answered around a certain topic. The second benefit is from an SEO perspective and that is that topic clusters can help strengthen topical authority. And topical authority, put simply, is a sign of credibility. And if you can establish authority around your topic to search engines such as Google, you not only show yourself as a reliable and relevant resource, but you'll also find it so much easier to rank for content around that same topic. I did a separate video on topical authority which explains why it's important and how to improve it. So I'll link to that up here somewhere if you wanna check that out. Okay, so how do we create topic clusters? First of all, I'll show you five basic steps you need to be aware of, and then we'll look at an example. Okay, step one is identify your topic or your pillar page. And where a lot of people go wrong with this is they worry about going too broad or competitive. They say things like, oh, I don't wanna go after that topic, it's far too competitive, I'm never going to rank for that. But that's kind of missing the point of topic clusters. The point isn't to rank for the main keywords around that pillar page or your topic, the point is to establish topical authority around this subject. So don't worry about going too broad, don't worry about going too competitive, you just wanna be building out that content around your topic so you can start to rank these cluster pages and start to rank easier for content around your topic. Don't worry about how broad the topic or how competitive the topic is initially. Step two is identify your subtopics. And this is where keyword research comes in. So you might want to do keyword research around your topic and look at things like related keywords, look at questions, what questions are people asking. So you might want to look at things like people also ask data from Google. You might want to look at popular keywords, so you filter by those. And some common things that might come up within your cluster are things like what is X, whatever the topic is. Examples of X, um, X tips and ideas, uh, how to do or use X, what are the benefits of X, how to use X for maybe a thing or an activity or a person and that person might be a certain gender or a work type or a hobby type, for example. Step three is create high quality content. And there's two types of content we need to think about here. There's pillar pages and there's cluster pages. Now, two common forms of content you will see with pillar pages are shorter form and longer form. And with shorter form, you tend to find it's not quite as extensive a piece of content and then it has small areas of content which explain the cluster pages briefly and then link off to the cluster pages. So for example, here we have a piece of content around topic clusters. There's a subheading about the benefits of topic clusters. It's briefly describing that, but not thoroughly. And then it's linking off to a much more in-depth piece about the benefits of topic clusters. Sometimes you might need to go more in depth on a topic and that's where longer form comes in. So the same kind of concept, you're still gonna have contextual links linking off to cluster pages, but you'll find that the pillar page is much more in-depth and longer form content. And I'll show you a good example of this shorter form format in a moment. And then for cluster pages, it's all about quality, quality, quality. And a good reference for this is Google. Have a look at who is already ranking around your topic and around your subtopics and look at what they're covering in the content, what subtopics they're talking about, what media they're using, what subheadings they're using, what layout they're using, what design they're using, and think about why people potentially like this content more than others. And then ask yourself honestly, is my content better than what's already ranking? And if it's not, then go away and make it better. But you really wanna make sure you're better than what's already ranking on page one of Google. Step four is add relevant internal links. Internal linking is huge for SEO. It's especially huge for topic clusters. I did a talk at Brighton SEO a couple of years ago just on the subject of internal linking. So I'll link to that up here. But in that talk, 
I touched on the importance of quantity, quality and relevance. Quantity being, do you have enough internal links coming in? Quality being, are they coming from decent and relevant pages? But relevance, that's the really, really important part. There's no point in just splattering internal links everywhere for the sake of internal links. You need to make sure they're relevant, it's really important. So if we look at this format again as an example, you'll see we have a subheading that's the benefits of topic clusters for SEO. We then have some text about that. We have an internal link using the anchor benefits of topic clusters, and then it's linking off to a cluster piece of content all about the benefits of topic clusters. So that's a really, really relevant internal link. Okay, and finally, step five is review and improve. And when I say improve, I'm talking about, do you need to improve the content? Is it genuinely good enough? Do you need to improve the internal linking? Do you need more content? Maybe you built a topic cluster with five cluster pages, but it's nowhere near enough to cover that topic. So you need to branch out and gradually build out more content. Maybe you need backlinks to come in and bolster that content. I think the key here is don't just set and forget it. Constantly be reviewing and improving your topic clusters. Okay, so I did say I'd show you an example. So let's have a look at this really good example from Drift. So Drift rank really well for the keyword chatbots, really competitive keyword. And this is their pillar page for that. And this layout may look familiar. It's that short form kind of layout. So they have some content about chatbots with some subheadings and brief content and they have a sub menu on the left hand side linking to their cluster pages. And if we scroll down a little bit there, again, this layout will look familiar. So we've got subheadings, brief bits of content, internal links, then going off to, to the relevant cluster pages. And you'll notice some internal links here, again, linking off to those cluster pages relevant to that subheading. And if we look at one of those cluster pages, you'll see they're then linking back to the pillar page with relevant anchors. So in this case, they're linking back with chatbot. And on this page, they're linking back with chatbots. And a bit further down on that page, they're also doing a bit of cross-linking as well. So sometimes they cross-link to other cluster pages. In this case, they're linking to benefits of chatbots. Now you might look at the left-hand side there and see there's nine cluster pages and think, well, maybe there's not too much internal linking going on if there's only nine cluster pages. But if you actually run a crawl, this was done with Sitebulb, you'll see that there's 109 linking URLs. So where are the rest of those internal links coming from? Well, they're mostly coming from blog content. So some examples here, we've got this blog content, doesn't really fit within that topic cluster, but it's relevant to chatbots, it's talking about chatbots, so it's linking back. Another more recent piece here, uh, this guide on personalization. So it doesn't really fit within the topic cluster of chatbots, but it's really relevant to chatbots and they do talk about chatbots in there, so they link back to the pillar page within that post. So you'll tend to find that topic clusters these days look more like this. So you've got the pillar page in the middle, the cluster pages around the outside of that, and then you've also got quite a lot of supporting content linking into the cluster from outside of that, and that is normally in the form of blog posts. As a side note, if you want a really quick way to find ideas for your topic cluster, RankCaddy has a feature called Content and Keywords, and you'll notice in the top tabs here, you've got all keywords, which is all your related keyword data, questions that people are asking, popular filters, so that's things like your benefits of, your examples of, uh, people also ask data, auto-suggest data, uh, supporting content. So that is basically looking at who is already ranking and what content have they written around a particular topic. So that's really useful for finding content ideas as well. And then you'll notice this new topic cluster feature which basically takes sets of your keyword research data in here, combines it with AI, and gives you suggestions for your cluster pages. I've run an example here, and you don't have to follow these titles to the letter, but this will give you a very good idea of the sorts of things you should be covering within your topic cluster. And there you have it. Topic clusters can be a really powerful way to structure content and build topical authority around a subject. I hope this helps. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want to see more examples like the one before, check out this video here. Thanks for watching and see you soon.